So, good day everyone. So, we are at the 8th episode of the Field Study 1. Okay, so let's jump right into our discussion. Our discussion is the school with the curriculum. Take note that the curriculum is actually the backbone of the education and that school plays a vital role in the implementation of the curriculum. But different schools also have certain uh, considerations in terms of developing their own curriculum patterned with the national curriculum. But what is curriculum? So curriculum is broadly defined as a totality of students' experience that occurs in an educational process. The term often refers specifically as a planned sequence of goal, instruction, and assessment to view the student's experience. So the curriculum is the backbone. This is the overview or the overall layout of what the students will learn after the entire duration of the curriculum. Now, the curriculum varies in different schools, in different countries, rather. And then in a certain country, there is a mandate, national mandate. Say, for example, Philippines, we have a national mandate of the entire curriculum, like the K-12 program for the basic education program and the outcomes-based education in the tertiary level, in the higher education. Um, but different schools, since we are also doing a school-based management, wherein uh, different schools have their own implementation programs also, how they can improve the curriculum. Now, allow me to give you a brief overview on curriculum development. So, well, first thing to consider is curriculum planning. Again, this is just an overview discussion, not a detailed discussion on what is curriculum, curriculum development because this is a field study program. This is just a review on what you should have learned in your curriculum development course. Now, curriculum planning. Curriculum planning is a process of determining and developing goals. Now, these are the determinants when you are planning a goal. Number one is that consider the learners because the learners, again, are the consumers of education. They are our clients as teachers, okay? And then the society. Any society to progress economically must progress educationally. Why? Because what happens inside the curriculum or inside the school is a reflection of what is happening outside in, an, in a global perspective. So, a good curriculum should be responsive to the changes of the society and the society vice versa. Meaning, kung ano dapat ang tinuturo sa loob ng paaralan, yun dapat ang kinakailangan ng lipunan. Hindi mo maaaring ituro ngayon yung, hin yung kailangan ng lipunan dati. Like kung ituturo mo man, ulitin mo o highlight mo na itinuturo mo ngayon ay uh, uh, tinuturo mo na pangangailangan ng lipunan noon ay nabigyan na ng solusyon or, or mas na-improve na. So ngayon, no, you should teach what the society needs now. But sometimes, no, there are educators that are really transformative that they are also pursuing uh, programs that do not yet exist and that's okay because curriculum responds to the needs of the society. Malay mo, kailangan na ng lipunan. Kagaya ngayon, there are courses that are not offered before, pero offered ngayon. Kasi yun yung kailangan ngayon. Okay? Next is knowledge. Set up an environment which will challenge all students to master knowledge. Since we're talking about knowledge, um, there are different forms of knowledge. There are different, different fields already are being created. And as teachers, as I have mentioned in the previous episodes, we are not uh, the masters of knowledge anymore. We are the facilitators of knowledge. We are not the sole source of knowledge. We are merely the facilitators, facilitators of knowledge. But the difficult part there is that there's a lot of knowledge. And what we have to do as teachers is to organize that. That's why a curriculum is an organized thought of the entire field already. Needs assessment is completed. Uh, to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the existing curriculum situation to, the, to provide directions for their improvement. Take note that you do not just change the curriculum immediately just because you feel it. You change the curriculum because 
it is needed to be changed by the society and by the learners and by the rising knowledge that is present already. Okay? Yun yung mga dapat natin i-consider. Um, average at around every six years dapat nagpapalit ng curriculum because at average then nagpapalit din yung state ng society in every six years. So formulating goals, goals are statements of endpoints or or outcomes of education statement of purpose. By analyzing the school goals, we can determine the scope of the entire educational program. In formulating goals, it must be aligned with the school, with the entire program as well. Uh, okay. So curriculum design. So curriculum planning, uh, things to consider are the learners, the society, and of course, the knowledge. And the next is curriculum design. So curriculum design is concerned with nature and arrangement of the four basic uh, uh, particular parts. Basic, I will discuss the basics. Number one is source of design should be science. It should be scientific method. It should provide meaning to why you should change the curriculum and how you design the curriculum. Society, the society should draw from its deals for curriculum, a school should draw its deals for the curriculum from the analysis of social situations because the role of the school to the society is very good because school is training the future generations already. Okay? So, if schools are teaching the future generations, therefore, the school should see the society of the current state of the society. Dapat responsive siya para paglabas ng bata, hindi siya masasyak ng sobra-sobra. Although alam naman natin na kapag lumabas ang bata sa society, masasyak siya very light lang. No? Pero ang, 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 ang thing is that the students are aware of what is happening of the society. We cannot uh, give them a blind eye of what is happening. Okay? We should give them what is happening in the society by reflecting it in our curriculum. Eternal and divine sources, of course, designers should draw from, the, uh, from past for guidance as to what is appropriate content. Um, other schools, especially uh, other schools, no, of course, have special subjects uh, that requires them to have, to draw knowledge on, on, uh, on, a religious aspect okay so of course we should ask guidance then uh, from the divine on what should be included in the curriculum because again teachers uh, you know edu ito yung nakakalimutan no schools are not only uh, schools are not only places for intellects but it's also a place for increasing morality so you want to increase morality as well inside our classrooms because if we want a moral society, let's create a moral uh, school. Knowledge, what, uh, what knowledge is most worth is also very important to be considered. Again, kung ano yung kailangan nilang matutunan, yun po yung ituro natin. Learners, of course, we derive the content of the subject or from, uh, of the curriculum from what the learners needs. Kaya meron tayong uh, assessments of needs ng mga bata. Okay? You don't just put there what you think, you, what you want to give them. You put there what you want your students to learn and what, their, what your students want to learn and, of course, needs to learn. Okay? So in designing um, designing the curriculum, take note of the dimensions of the curriculum. Mabilis lang ito. Uh, please take note of the word basics. Basics. So we have balance. So balance, equitable distribution of content, time, experiences, and other elements of design. So when you are designing a curriculum, consider the basics. Number one is balance. So dapat balance ang content mo all across the curriculum, horizontally and vertically. Hindi pwedeng, ang hirap na ng topic, tapos ang haba-haba pa ng time, ang haba-haba pa. Okay? So, dapat, it's, it talks about um, balance of the distribution of the topics and appropriateness for the learner's age as well. Especially in the basic education, you cannot demand a student to perform something that is for grade 10, e, samantalang grade 6 pa lang yung bata. 
articulation, interrelatedness of various aspects of the curriculum, horizontal and vertical. So dito dapat nakikita ng bata yung continuity ng uh, continu uh, continuity dapat merong relatedness horizontally and uh, vertically when it comes to uh, the same subject and other subjects as well. Example, if the student can see the relationship of economics and EPP, uh, sorry, PLE, no? So, makikita niya doon yung relationship ng uh, supply and demand by performing in their TLE class and then kasama na din doon yung English nila, lang English language sa kanilang writing ng business plan. So, you see, tatlong subject magkakasama, isang output lang. So, gagawa sila ng business plan kasabay nun, ipaperform nila yung business and they're going to analyze it using their knowledge about economics. So, dapat ganun yung maramdaman ng bata. Articulation, scope, breath, and depth. Ayaw nga natin take note of the breath and depth. Baka mamaya, ang hirap-hirap na nga nung subject mo, nung topic sa subject mo, ang lalim-lalim pa. Kung lalaliman mo, kung lalaliman mo po, huwag masyadong... Uh, Malawak. Pag malawak naman, okay lang na topical yung, yung topics natin na uh, surface topics lang. And take note, ha, um, i-consider nyo na it, baka itur na ituturo pa yan next year or ituturo pa yan sa next year level. Kasi baka magkaroon ka ng curriculum overlap. Yung naturo mo, yung dapat ituturo pa ng grade 8, naturo mo na sa grade 7. Take note of that. Integration refers to linking of all types of knowledge, as I have mentioned. They could also see the um, they could also see the integration to other disciplines as well, similar to articulation. Continuity, dapat yung end ng quarter na to yun din yung uh, tutuloy sa next quarter. At ang gusto natin sa continuity ay seamless, yung hindi mararamdaman ng bata. Yung parang nagulat, ay, tapos na pala si sir. Para hindi, para hindi ano yung okay next, okay next, okay next. No? Para seamless yung move ng curriculum natin. Para yung learning, tuloy-tuloy lang. And then lastly, sequence, of course, as teachers, provide a sequence that is continuous and cumulative for learning. Yung, ay, hindi ko to kayang ituro. Alisin ko na lang yan. Ayaw natin ng ganon. When you present a curriculum, make sure that it should be continuous and cumulative. Hindi yung dahil ayaw mong ituro, gustong gusto mong ito ituro, yun na lang yung tinuro mo, hindi mo na tinuro yung other aspects. Okay? The sequence is very important because the sequence also allows you to create a story in your curriculum. Kasi nagtatahi ka eh. Uh, principles of sequence, of course, it should be simple to complex. Prerequisite learning, kaya nga tayo may mga pre, uh, prerequisite topics or prerequisite subjects, whole to part and chronological. And many other parts. Now, this varies depending on the necessity or the nature of the subject as well. Okay, selection of objective is very important. Selection of content. And then selection of learning experience. This is already for grade placement, time allotment. These are important topics when we're talking about the uh, implementation already of the curriculum. Prior to implementation, dapat established na to. Then yung curriculum implementation, okay? So the implementation is the interaction between those who have created the program and those who are charged to deliver it. So sino ba yung charged to deliver the curriculum? The teachers are charged to deliver the program. We are the implementers of the curriculum. But then again, teachers should also be part in the development of the curriculum. We should be part of the development, implementation, as well as the evaluation of the curriculum. So development and implementation, usually ang akala kasi nila nag implement lang si teacher but actually we are also part of the development of the curriculum. So why is that? Uh, kailangan no, tama yung implementation ng curriculum. Requires educators, educators to shift from current programs which they are familiar to, uh, with to new or modified programs. Involves changes in knowledge, actions, and attitudes of people can be seen as a process of professional development and growth involving ongoing interactions, feedbacks, and assistance. It's a process of clarification whereby individuals and groups come to understand and practice change in attitudes and behaviors often involving using resources. Okay, and many more. So, uh, 
here it requires supportive atmosphere in which there is trust and open communication between administrators teachers educators and where risk is encouraged uh, where risk is encouraged so the school community is actually grounded with the curriculum dapat as teachers we are implementers of the curriculum but then again we must communicate ourselves to the administrators Okay, as well as the learners. And then lastly is curriculum evaluation, um, the process of delineating, obtaining, and providing useful information for judging decision alternatives involves value judgment about the curriculum and did we do what we want to do. So why should we evaluate the curriculum? First is to meet the demands with current educational reforms that have been made. So dapat, again, responsive ito sa lipunan, responsive ito sa society na meron tayo. At sa global perspective, remember that education is moving forward globally, not just nationally. So dapat alam natin kung ano nga ba yung nagiging international policies pagdating sa education. Provide directions, security, and feedback for learning. Determine appropriate and available resources, activities, content, methods, or whether curriculum has coherence, balance, articulation, scope, integration, continuity, and sequence in order to meet curriculum goals and objectives. So you should reflect and review and review and review and evaluate the curriculum. If Is the curriculum still doing its part? Okay? Is it still effective at that time? Dapat alam natin yun. And of course, no areas for evaluation, ito yung mga dapat tingnan. Uh, mission statement, the philosophy, sequence, the order, continuity, it should be without disruption, the scope, articulation, balance, that's the qualitative and the quantitative aspect of the content, and then of course, coherence. That's also why we have... Um, accreditations for the schools no, because this is to see if the school is still performing its part. And then this is the last part that after the evaluation, the curriculum, is it going to change or is it going to improve? That's dependent on what is necessary depending upon the review of the evaluation. Okay, so after the evaluation, is the curriculum going to improve or going to change? So, curriculum improvement is enriching, modifying certain aspects without changing the fundamental concepts wherein the VMGO, the vision, mission, and goal, do not change. Objectives do not change. Several parts will be changed and improved, okay? But the fundamental concepts must not be changed. The philosophy of the curriculum must still be aligned. And then when it comes to change, is the basic alteration of the structure. So if you change it, the design would also change. The experience would also change. Okay, so this is actually uh, based somehow on the school, the district, and on the national level to make difference by shifting to new goals and means. So curriculum alignment, uh, mabilis lang ito. Should, the curriculum should be aligned from the national level to district, at regional to district, to school base and to classroom alignment, whether it be uh, uh, in order no, para mak makasabay yung bata, if lumipat man yung bata sa ibang school, makasabay pa rin siya doon sa changes ng school. Uh, doon sa practices ng school. Kasi yung curriculum na ginagamit mo dito, yun pa rin yung curriculum na ginagamit nila sa, uh, sa ibang school within the country. Okay, and then of course we are doing curriculum development and then curriculum alignment, of course, to prevent curriculum gap and curriculum overlap. So pag sinabi natin curriculum gap, ito yung sinasabi ni teacher, ay dapat naturo na yan last year. Dapat naturo na yan nung grade ano kayo, hindi ko na yan ituturo. Eh hindi naturo nung teacher last year. Ang tawag doon, curriculum gap kasi hindi talaga naturo. Ito naman sa curriculum overlap, ito yung repetition ng topic, yung sasabihin ng bata. Ay, sir, ma'am, naturo na po sa amin yan ni, ni ma'am, sir, last year. Ala, bakit? Ngayon ko palang dapat yan ituturo. Ang tawag doon ay curriculum overlap kasi nagpapatong yung topics ninyo. Repetition na dapat, iba dapat yung naturo ni teacher last year. Okay? So, meron tayong tinatawag na vertical alignment. So, 
uh, planning curriculum across the grade level from kindergarten through high school or even college if you are preparing for a certain program, building upon the instruction based upon the standards. And then horizontal alignment naman is alignment of curriculum being taught by the teachers in the common grade level. So dapat there is an alignment although different although different subjects although different subjects dapat the same ang kanilang goal. Kaya nga di ba kung titingnan ninyo ang curriculum guides from grades uh uh, in the K-12 program, bawat curriculum guide saan merong expected learning outcomes per year level. Okay? Kasi, ayun yung ina-expect na makita after nila matake yung mga subjects na ito. And as you can see, the alignment is also present. Written curriculum specifies what is to be taught is produced by the state and the school system and the classroom teacher. Taught curriculum, this is uh, inside the classroom and then the test alignment. Okay, so anong gusto kong sabihin dito? You have a written curriculum, that's the objective already. Nakalagay na dun yung lesson plan mo, let's say the curriculum guide, down to your lesson plan. Nakalagay doon yung objectives and how you want to do it. But when you are teaching already inside the classroom, the taught curriculum, the instructions, it varies depending on the classroom setup. Kasi uh, one lesson plan will not fit in all your classrooms. Sometimes you have to administer a different technique in, in different classrooms. Ganun talaga ang pagtuturo. But then again, as teachers, sometimes you have to deviate your way whether it be plan B, plan C, plan D, as much as you want to follow plan A, hindi iyon nasusunod sa lahat ng pagkakataon. Okay? Because different classroom setups nagbabago and different students, different learners in different sections, it has different responses. So, ang nangyayari, you have plan B, plan C, plan D, as much as you want to follow plan A. But as long as the objective is fulfilled, it's okay. You need to hit the objective. Ayun yung gusto natin mga guro. And then how are you going to know if the objective is is um, appropriate is already hit? No, by evaluation. So take note of this curriculum triangle: the written curriculum, the taught curriculum, and the tested uh, part of the curriculum, and that's the evaluation. That's the time when you're going to say if your classroom implementation of the curriculum is effective. Uh, these are the benefits of curriculum alignment. There are a lot of benefits of ben uh, curriculum alignment. One is that improves students' uh, students' test scores by making sure that the information a teacher teaches in her classroom lines up with the information covered on the standardized test. The teachers can collaborate together more effectively for all they have uh, the same basic goals for the classroom. Helps a school or individual teacher proves the students are learning, mater uh, learning materials that lines up with the state standards. Students can travel from school and still have the same basic instructions. And ensures in increasing, um, ensures in an increase in students academic performance. So, because the curriculum is aligned, let's say nationally, so kahit magpalipat-lipat yung bata ng school, as long as the, as the competencies are the same, it's being taught, hindi masyado mahihirapan yung bata. Kasabay din ito ang mga guro, kapag nagkakaroon ng conferences, talakayin, nagkakaroon sila ng pagkakaunawa patungkol sa curriculum kasi Meron silang uh, similar practices. But then again, different schools have also different best practices na gusto nating i-share sa ibang schools. Okay. So, uh, being a teacher, no, this is the life of a teacher. It's like an iceberg. The execution, the curriculum execution is yun lang yung nakikita. But then again, from the preparation for teaching and learning, there's a lot of it. Madami pong ginagawa ang mga guru. So again, who is the center of the curriculum in the educational process? In all structures, all structures in the 21st century education, lahat yan, the students are the center of teaching and learning process. 
again, this is just a short crash course or review on what you have learned in a curriculum development as part of the field study. The reason why I decided to highlight this is that because curriculum is the backbone of education and that it is the backbone of your development, implementation, and evaluation of what you are going to teach as a teacher. Okay? So, kung hindi mo na alam ituturo mo, go back to the curriculum. Kung nalilito ka na, kung, kung ano na yung susunod mo na topic, go back to the curriculum. Consult the curriculum. Okay? Because as teachers, uh, mahalaga po sa atin ang curriculum. Sinama ko to sa topic ng classroom management because the curriculum plays a vital role in the classroom management because it plays lalo na sa part ng implementation. The quality of an education system cannot exceed the quality of its teachers. So, as teachers, we should not stop improving ourselves, continually improve ourselves para, no, kahit walang libro, kahit walang projector, kaya pa rin natin magturo kung ano nga ba yung hinihiling sa atin bilang mga guro na ituro. So, that would be all. That would be the end of my discussions for the school and the curriculum for the field study one. So, I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thank you very much and God bless Bob.